The Blue Carbon Ecosystem Restoration Project sits within the Adelaide International Bird Sanctuary, an area of critically important habitat for many migratory shorebirds. We didn't have calendars, we didn't have uh, clocks or watches in those days, and that's what they were to us. We knew with the birds, you know, the, the seasons, you know, the flow of the waters. Around 15,000 shorebirds gather here for up to six months each year before migrating to breeding grounds in China, Siberia and elsewhere in East Asia. Blue carbon is the carbon that's captured and stored in coastal wetlands in salt marsh mangroves and seagrass habitats. These habitats can capture and store larger amounts of carbon than forest areas, and if undisturbed, the carbon can remain in the sediment for thousands of years. This makes it a really powerful natural climate solution. Every area that we can encourage to store more carbon or sequester more carbon, essentially we're pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and we're storing it in the ground. And that helps us reduce the CO2 within the atmosphere, but also deeper than just sequestering carbon, having coastal ecosystems that are functioning really well is good for the planet and it's really good for us as human beings. Sadly, global wetlands have disappeared. They've been cleared for agriculture and urban development. The Nature Conservancy is protecting and restoring coastal wetlands to not only support these important ecosystems, but to fight climate change. Well, a few years ago, we were brought in a conversation with, with the state government around, you know, uh, what would uh, this country here look like as a national park and its significance around, you know, the, uh, the bird life. The project, situated within the Adelaide International Bird Sanctuary, is not only an internationally recognised area for migratory shorebirds, but also provides an important carbon sink for Adelaide. This area boasts vast stretches of salt marsh, mangrove and seagrass habitat that capture and store carbon. Additional project work involves restoration activities at a landscape scale to reduce threats and improve coastal habitat. The tide is a really powerful force and we've shown in other areas where tide is introduced to areas that are previously bunded, it can bring all sorts of benefits. So the first stage is really bringing that tide in, flushing out the salts that are there, and then you have a habitat where things can grow and then ecosystems can develop. So we're doing a lot of the measurements that are associated with these blue carbon ecosystem, the salt marsh and the mangrove. We're also looking a little bit at the mudflat in here. We're looking at the entire changes in the biodiversity that are going to happen in the context of the tidal reconnection. So we're getting a lot of really groundbreaking data for that site, but we're also getting all of the data for the before situation. But then we are going to measure after the tidal reconnection is happening, then how the improvements in biodiversity are going to occur. And we're also measuring the actual carbon changes. The birds had their own song and dance, and you know, our people certainly learnt from them, and they mimic the birds, they mimic the characters of that bird, because it was in our daily life, you know, the stories that came with the birds. This is a unique project and partnership which allows us to reach the scale needed to have a positive impact for ecosystems and the communities that rely on them. So we really want to have this as a bit of a showcase that it really inspires more private landowners and more public landowners to really do more for the environment and instigate more tidal reconnection along the coast. We're doing things together, you know, and in that togetherness, you know, we're learning, we're relearning. We're doing our own healing. It allows for an element of us in our feelings to allow joy to come into what we're doing. You know, when that happens, you know, anything can happen, you know. Restoring and protecting coastal wetlands will help us to address the dual crisis of climate change and biodiversity loss, resulting in win-win outcomes for people and nature.